our next speaker is somebody who helps people start somewhere. So Neve O'Keefe started her career um, as a consultant with Accenture. Um, I, many management consultants, she eventually grew up to say, I have my own opinions and I have my own way of doing things. And she's built a fabulous business around First 100. And First 100 is a business that works with senior executives in the first 100 days. That's what we call in the industry is the guarantee period, yeah? First three months, make sure that they stay. You don't want them walking out the door, got to keep the fee there, right? But that first 100 days, that it's delicate time when you join an organization. For all of us, I know when I've joined an organization, you don't know the people, don't know the culture, you really want to impress. And it can be difficult, you can be left in the dark. And these businesses about coaching those executives, working with those executives um, to basically get through that first 100 days and make an impact in those first 100 days. Please, if you could join me, putting your hands together for Neve O'Keefe. Just by way of introduction to myself and the first 100 concept, just to give you a bit of background, I spent eight years as a strategy consultant, as Johnny was saying, and uh, then I worked for two years in retained executive search. Our main client was Barclays Group. Uh, I was there for about two years, placing director to C-level, and um, obviously interacting with their HR department a lot, and over time just began to notice um, I suppose a strange dichotomy whereby all this time and money and resource and effort um, going into uh, finding the best people in the marketplace, but absolutely nothing invested in ensuring that they had a successful transition. And uh, I really felt that we were, um, I really felt that it was a very missed trick, you know, um, for the organisation and for the individual. Um, the spectrum of, of risk, you know, stemmed from loss potential all the way to loss of position and loss of all that original investment dollar. So with my uh, background in consulting and uh, I suppose this observed experiential insight into um, what was happening, uh, I decided I would set up my own consultancy. I called it First 100, so very much uh, does what it says on the tin and, uh, and, and, and went, went from there. Um, in terms of just one thing that I thought was um, important as well in, in terms of what I mean would be relevant to I don't know what what you guys think but I felt that we were all colluding in um, a, a sort of a mythology around the leader and what the leader really was um, I certainly had them on a pedestal but really they are talented executives everybody has strengths and they typically have a spike which is a particular unique talent that has got them this far forward in their career but really, none of them are all round leaders. And if they are, then that's their spike, but they don't have another one. So you could get a finance director that was a great subject matter expert, but really didn't know how to lead his team. Um, or you, 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 know, you could have a marketing director who had spent his whole career in Diageo, but didn't know how to transition into another industry, and so on and so forth. So I felt that really, um, this kind of, you know, let's pay for the best in the market. Um, and when they turn up, everything will be great, was really a sort of a myth and we were all colluding in it. And it just wasn't true. And I felt it was too macho, too sink or swim, and it really wasn't doing anybody uh, any service. And I think, you know, from my experience, this holds true today. I've worked with um, many glo global organizations and being frank, nobody gets this right. Uh, so, I mean, we started off, first client was with Microsoft, second with Accenture. So. These are obviously global corporations. Um, some had their own, you know, maybe a, an online tool or handed out a book, um, but really nothing, um, nothing sophisticated, nothing in terms of what, uh, what would really make a difference. Just to give you a statistic, um, over 25% of Barclays Group's externally joining director hires were leaving within 18 to 24 months. But nobody was taking responsibility for that. Um, when people do leave, it's typically in the second year and, you know, people like to say it's a cultural issue, um, they can't cut it in our culture, um, or it's a chemistry issue. Uh, nobody really says, uh, well, actually, it might be the hiring manager issue or it could be we don't transition on our leaders effectively. Um, so I, so that, that's, you know, that was the insight. Um, I wanted to create a st strategic proposition um, a very commercial proposition. I wasn't interested in employee induction or um, orientation. That also was not being done well at the time and still that's quite patchy in a lot of organizations. 
But that wasn't my interest. My interest was, is there a strategy consulting offering um, that, can be de that can be created and deployed that uh, really uh, gets you a faster return on investment on these hires um, within the 100 days? So, um, okay, so 10 years later, you know, um, have worked with, you know, real people in, in real time um, on their real first 100 days. So after about eight years, was in a position to write uh, a book about it. So um, I suppose these books are glorified business cards, really. Um, but they're not the what, they're not more about, they're not about the problem. They're more about what you, what you can do about the problem. So um, in 2011, um, I wrote your first 100 days. And this is really for the individual, um, how to make maximum impact in your new leadership role. And then the following year, um, I wrote a book about lead your team in your first 100 days because, I mean, it was a topic worthy of a, of a, of a full book on its own um, because I, I really felt that, again, coming back to the, the myth, the leader as hero, often um, there's too much emphasis in terms of that the leader will arrive and everything will be fine and not enough in terms of how they get their team up to speed really, really quickly. So what's what, I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, I suppose obviously there will be cultural issues in the first 100 days, um, there, but there's a lot of forgiveness as well. Um, but some of the scenarios that you might come across would be uh, arriving and your predecessor sitting at your desk. And I mean, that happens more than you might think. I mean, you, you guys will have your own stories because you know what your own clients have, have experienced. Um, having 200 emails in your inbox and not knowing who, who, you know, who is who and how, how to calibrate. Um, your hiring manager, your boss, um, is abroad when you arrive uh, on holidays or has, been, has resigned or even possibly been fired uh, in the guarding leave between the time you were hired and the time that you arrive. Um, now you're arriving into an organisation where you have no sponsorship. Um, what to do about that situation? Um, so that there's, there's a myriad of, of scenarios that, um, that we come across with our clients, but really the single biggest issue is overwhelm. Um, it's overwhelming you know, to, to step up into a new leadership position with all the pressure in terms of the expectation that you have put on yourself and the expectation that the organisation has on you waiting and waiting for you to arrive. Um, and with that overwhelm um, can often come, uh, actually people either do two things, they either move too fast or they move too slow. And by moving too fast, they try to get involved in everything um, and maybe stay in too much in the detail. And I particularly don't like the move too slow one, which is, uh, the kind of defensive position, which is leaders come to the role and they say, well, for the first three months, I'm just going to listen and learn. Now that to me is, uh, you, know, that, you know, that's a cop-out really. Um, it's about getting the balance right between moving too fast and moving too slow. Um, really, the insight is don't get immediately involved in firefighting. You know, try to take a, a deep breath and a step back, I suppose, and think about what is your vision for the role what is it that you've been asked to do? What are your key strategic priorities? And then to set a plan out in terms of how you're going to stay focused on them. Because a lot of people come into the role with a plan, um, but it's uh, quite another challenge to actually, you know, uh, stay true, stay true to that plan in the face of so many competing priorities. So um, I suppose this is where we help our clients in terms of being more strategic. Um, we will have a two-hour conversation, either pre-start or within two weeks of them actually starting in role. And we talk, we bring them, you know, right back to what it is that, um, that they want to achieve. So think about, you know, what is their overall career uh, goal? Um, maybe they're in a position of director at the moment, but they actually aspire to be a CEO. But actually start right out there. And in fact, that immediately lifts them out of the detail and the overwhelm. Then we talk about what is the business environment and the platform for change. Um, what is it you want to achieve you know, within two to three years of this role? What, where would you want to have been? Therefore, what are your 12 month priorities? And only in that context, write your first 100 days plan. And I think that's important to, um, to say because every, you know, you, this word first 100 days plan, 
it's it's become you know it's become a thing. Oh yeah, I have one. But any time people tell me they have one and I look at it, it's not a plan actually, it's a list. It's a list of things that they want to do. And it's not even a, a fully comprehensive list. So when people say they have a plan, a first 100 days plan, um, they sometimes say they, they mean they've read a book. So um, that also is not a plan. Um, so just to give you a sense of, and I suppose we have made a bit of a science out of a, quite a niche area. But um, what we say is, take a look at the, you know, the whole ecosystem within which you're operating. So you're a particularly unique person in the situation. You've been asked to do this particular role, you know, at this particular time. I mean, uh, you know, in this particular economic state, shall we say, so, like no one has actually done this role before because this time has not occurred before. So you, we have to take that into account, um, even if it's, even if you've done a similar role in the past. Um, you're working in this particular organization dynamic and it's in this particular market. So we, you take all of that context and we take any leadership role and we, we, we um, refra reframe it for the purposes of the first 100 days. So it doesn't matter whether, you know, whether you're a chief executive, whether you're a functional um, director, whether you're the CEO or whatever, this is actually any leadership role in the first 100 days. You can split it into 10 key component roles. Um, on person, you're making a transition. So we talk about what is that transition? Is it a leadership step up? Is it about um, uh, a change of industry? Is it a, you know, what is the nature of that transition? Um, so that we talk about that. Um, unique contributor, so what, it is, what is it that is your key, your key spike, your key talent, so that we can bring that out early on? Um, on the role, what is it that you need to learn within the first 100 days? What's the content? that uh, you need to you know, quickly swat up on um, as fast as possible. Um, business achiever is what targets you need to set out for yourself or what have already been set out for you. Um, what are you going to do in terms of building your team? The communications provider one is um, you can't just be successful, you need to be able to communicate your success. So the plan itself is a great vehicle for sitting down with stakeholders and actually um, Set, you know, showing them what you're setting out to do and then giving you feedback on that. Um, you know, it's odd, but very often there, that, unless we force that conversation, that conversation often doesn't take place in the first three months, which, you know, is, you know, is, is odd in itself. Um, we also, at the end of first 100 days, um, encourage our clients to um, present a record of achievements. Um, so that it becomes an early winner, you know, um, within three months to say, actually, this is what I have already done. Um, on organisation, then, when you come in into a particular post, you may, obviously, you'll have, your, you'll have your day job, but you're also, at that level, going to come in as a leader of the firm. So what value are you going to add to the organisation as a leader of the firm? You need to navigate the culture. You also need to think about who you, do you need to build relationships with, um, you know, whether that's just... 10 to 20 people that you absolutely have to meet within the first 100 days. Um, and then within the marketplace, how can you have an early win in the market? So we sort of wash the executives through a process. Um, you basically, we meet them five times, it's two hours each time. Um, and we set out the plan in the first one to two sessions. And then the 30, 60, 90s are about accountability. And really, I suppose our biggest value out of that point is, yes, we can continue to give ideas and we can seed in particular accelerators at particular moments of time because it's too much to do everything in the first, uh, you know, the beginning, but 30 to 60 days, we can talk more about how things are going with the team. Uh, but um, if we don't have this accountability mechanism um, where we review the plan and talk about how things are, you know, our clients can become derailed again with, with a sense of overwhelm. And also, now we can have a real conversation about what it's really like and we can add value ourselves in that way. Then we close out at 100 days. Um, so, in our experience, um, what's been critical to success for um, our leader clients is that they really need to empower themselves. Um, Probably because there's an absence of a transition program uh, in, in organisations, um, but also because um, they really need to take responsibility, personal responsibility for making an impact. 
Um, they need to write a strategic first 100 days plan, not a list. They need to be a manager, uh, sorry, a leader, not a manager. And by that we, need, we mean they really need to um, set out a vision and really add value rather than just take instructions. Um, avoid the leader as hero trap. So we just try to confront that by outing it and having a conversation about it and ensuring that they don't themselves collude in that as well once they arrive. Um, because the worst manifestation of the leader as hero trap is all hail the leader when he arrives. Um, three to six months later, things aren't great, but nobody, everybody's full of forgiveness in the sense that they say, well, he's new, so he didn't know that, or she didn't realize that, and that's fine. And then actually the tide really turns at 12 months where people can actually, well, certainly in financial services, get quite vicious and say, that new hire has been here for a year and they have done nothing and really we want them out. And it's gone from very mellow forgiveness in the first three to six months to let's get rid of that person uh, 12 to 18 months in. So uh, take all, so if that's the whole, if you want to stay, if you want that leader as hero kind of mentality. But if you're uh, a leader running a team who has, you know, um, the intention of um, working and collaborating with lots of people in order to get lots of things done, then you can sort of step away from that hero um, pedestal. And obviously pay attention to the people, power and politics, um, which, you know, can sometimes only come through experience over time, um, but you can certainly alert yourself to it early on. Um, I suppose the big so what for you guys might be, um, might be what I would urge you to th rethink what recruitment is. Um, maybe recruitment doesn't end until the end of 100 days. Um, it's a completely new way of looking at it. It's probably more strategic way of looking at it. It's also maybe more honest way of looking at it. Um, and rather, I mean, I know back in my day, which was 2002, 2004, working in executive search, if you had a dinner with your client in the first 100 days, you thought you were doing a great job. So rather than that being the only type of level of support and service you give your clients, perhaps um, you could educate your HR buyer to think about this, or perhaps as a recruiter, you could think about differentiating yourself in the marketplace and think about whether this is something that you want to offer and uh, sort of elongate the, the value chain of recruitment. Okay, thank you.